Okay guys, we are going to do the problem that is in your PowerPoint. I'm gonna show you handwritten how to do it. So the question states, puck A moves at a speed of five meters per second. It collides with puck B, which is stationary. After the collision, puck A moves at two meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees from the X axis. What is the speed and direction of puck B after? Okay, uh, we're going to give both masses 0.1 kilograms, so that should help you. Our first step is we're going to want to draw it out. Our first calculations are going to be to write out the momentum equation before and after the collision. We are going to want to separate the x and the y directions before and after the collision and separate both puck A and puck B. So puck A before it collides is traveling in the x direction. We know its mass is 0.1 kilogram and the velocity is five meters per second. So multiply those together, you get 0.5 kilograms meters per second. It is zero for the y direction because it's traveling in the x direction. And puck B is stationary, so that makes it easy. All right, now we're gonna have to add them together to get the total momentum before the collision. Again, we're separating the x and the y direction. So we know that the total momentum in the x direction is 0.5 and the total momentum in the y direction beforehand is zero kilograms meters per second. Okay, now writing the momentum in the x and y direction after is a little bit more laborious. So for puck A in the y direction, we are gonna have 0.1 kilograms times two meters per second times the cosine of 30 degrees because it is moving at an angle of 30 degrees. Okay, for the y direction, we write out the same thing, except for now we're gonna use the sine of 30. So it's gonna be 0.1 kilograms times two meters per second times the sine of 30 degrees, which is the angle. Now, don't forget to calculate it because I didn't do that right away. Masses. However, we do not know the velocity of B in the x direction. And we do not know the angle. Same thing in the y direction. Okay. We do, however, know the momentum after the collision because it is the same as the momentum before the collision. Ta da! And before I forget, we need to calculate the momentum of puck A after the collisions, which you just multiply across and you should get 0.17 kilograms meters per second in the X direction and 0.1 kilograms meters per second in the Y. Okay, let's calculate the velocity of puck B after the collision. We have to separate our X and Y directions. And don't forget that momentum beforehand equals momentum after. So if we write this out, it's going to be puck A beforehand plus puck B beforehand equals puck A after plus puck B after. Okay, so we're gonna take this equation and put it in the x and y directions. We're going to write the same equation just with little x's and y's depending on if it's in the x direction and the y direction. Okay, we're gonna take our calculations from before and we know what the momentum of A and B was before. B was zero because it's at rest and A is 0.5 kilograms meters per second and A after is 0.17 kilograms meters per second and then puck B is 0.1 kilograms times the velocity times the cosine of the angle. 
We're going to simplify and write Vx for the velocity and cosine of the angle because we're just going to solve for the velocity currently. So 0.5 plus 0 is 0.5. Okay, let's write this all out. We got 0.1 Vx. So what we're going to do is subtract 0.17 from both sides to get 0.33 kilograms meters per second. And then we're going to divide by 0.1 kilograms. So kilograms are going to get crossed off, and we are going to be left with velocity in the extraction as 3.3 meters per second. Okay, now we're going to solve for the velocity in the y direction. So we're going to write out our subscripts using y. Okay, in the y direction, beforehand, we know both a and b are zero. Okay, puck a after in the y direction is traveling at 0.1 kilograms meters per second. And puck b, we're going to have to write out as 0.1 kilograms times the velocity times the sine of the angle. We're going to do the same thing as we did before. We're going to just use velocity of y to denote it. So then we can simplify our equation. We're going to subtract both sides by 0.1 kilograms meters per second. And then obviously divide by 0.1 kilograms, which gives us negative 1 meters per second in the y direction. For our velocity for b, we have 3.3 meters per second in the x direction and negative 1 meters per second in the y direction. So on our handy dandy graph up here, here is your x direction of 3.3 and let's write our y over here as negative 1 so that we get a vector angle. We are going to have to use Pythagorean's theorem, Pi's theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared to solve for this. So a squared is 3.3 .3 squared plus negative 1 squared equals c. We're going to have to square root that. And we get 3.45 meters per second for velocity. To solve for the angle, you can use SOCA TOA. I'm going to use TOA. So we need the opposite over adjacent. Tangent opposite over adjacent. So it's negative 1 divided by... 3.3. Don't forget you're going to have to use the tangent inverse for solving for the angle, which gives us negative 17 degrees. So our answer is that puck B is traveling at 3.45 meters per second at an angle of negative 17 degrees below the x-axis.